Well, Virgo, it's your turn, and uh, it's May 2018, Didichi here. If you're new, welcome. It's great to have your company. And, you know, one of the uh, primary things I see with Virgo is the strong accentuation on the activities of your ruling planet, which is Mercury. <coughs> Mercury is generally very, very intellectual, rational, deductive. Uh, it also rules the sign of Gemini, which is your career sector here. There's a strong affinity between these two signs, but at the same time, very, very different in the, in the way that they function. Um, you, of course, have the earthy quality of Virgo, um, whereas Gemini is of the air quality. Nevertheless, you do partake of the quality of Mercury, giving you more of a mental spin on things. And that's what I want to talk to you about this month, especially where we see this massive, intense, uh, and often challenging combination of planets here in your fifth house of creativity. So I've alluded to the intellectual quality of your ruling planet for the very purpose of uh, making a point this month <coughs> that where you have the transformative combination of these planets, Mars ruling your eighth house of transformation, Pluto ruling Scorpio, which is the natural eighth house ruler, and Saturn, which is the karmic planet here, ruling your fifth house. All of these forces have come together in the creative area of your, your horoscope. Now, that, that is your key out of any problems that you've got. Uh, but that is your big challenge in life. Because your key signature, really, is this mental, deductive, analytical, critical component. Whereas this this creative combination, it's a transformative creative combination, can occur with great inner turmoil, letting go of your tried and tested habits of intellectual assessment of things is diametrically opposed to the action of these creative planets. The creative process takes you out of this mental sphere and puts you into this heart level. That requires a lot of trust. And this month, that is exactly where a lot of this stuff is going. Take a look at this. The moon here moving into this sector, first in conjunction with Saturn, which can create the creative blocks. You know, create the creative blocks. <laughs> well, it sets up those creative blocks. You could have a writer's block or a creative block. You're trying to create, but you might find it difficult. Not because you don't have the material, but because you're still reliant on this mercurial element of your nature. That can change because if you keep a close eye also, not only on the moon here, have a look at the challenging aspect. Look at that. That's just incredible. Look at the tight squares. Could be the mercury to all of this. This is what I'm talking about for you, Virgo. When we see these squares, we see the challenge that's going on. This is not just an argument. This is the internal self-talk, the self-dialogue, the challenges, the karmic obstacles that you have in life. This is what you have to work with, for and against when we see all of this. So the creative impulse is there, but you're still struggling with this. That's going to change right about this time, around May 7th, 8th, 9th. Look at this mercurial conjunction with Uranus. This is going to bring with it brilliant ideas and it's going to upset the status quo for you to some extent. Again, look at these squares. They're still occurring there. This can make you angry. It can make you frustrated. It can create problems in your work because your ideas are not being met with the requisite response that you want. So how you deal with this, I was about to say it's your problem. Well, it is your problem. It's your, I don't want to call it a problem. I call it a challenge. It's your challenge to lift yourself up out of this yeah, look at the 13th, the intellectual there. And on the 14th, it moves. This intellectual system that's ingrained into your methodologies. Uh, and then, very shortly after this, you will see these two planets. There it is, Uranus moving in out of this 8th house where it's been for seven years, would you believe? So this is very, very significant. This is not only going to work on affecting your 
mental approach to things. I've missed out Venus. I'll talk about that in a moment. But this is going to revolutionize your spiritual belief system through this next seven years. Because this ninth house has to do with that area of your life. Here, I, I was mentioning Venus. Venus, very friendly, finance planet in the 10th house, all through this cycle, bringing with it good fortune in your professional activities. Notwithstanding the, the challenges here and the day-to-day -day nitty gritty of you know, the methodologies and the processes. Overall, you're doing well in your work. And we see also around the 22nd, I think it's the 22nd, the sun will move into this upper part of the horoscope. Mercury will also do a similar shift uh, in the very last part of the month. There it is, the 22nd. Bingo. That's when you can expect. And that was simultaneous, if you have a look there. Venus moved to your 11th house of acquisition of uh, one's goals or objectives, along with uh, the sun moving up into the 10th house of profession. That usually brings with it some accolade or some elevation in status, some promotion, better position generally overall. Here we also note Mars moving into your sixth house of workplace activity. A lot more dynamic activity and that's a very good placement for the eighth ruler. Eighth ruler is a very negative ruler but being positioned in the sixth area is very good. It actually neutralizes, uh, it, it, it's sort of a phase cancellation of those energies from Mars which is good. Social activities pick up around this uh, period, 22nd, and um, we see, I was about to say something else there about uh, achieving your, your goals. You can see the first part of the month was just chock full of all these complex issues, but it, the chart opens up a bit after this. You still have these two long standing planets in your fifth house, but I think given that there's some opening here, uh, some opportunities here in your learning and your skill sets, chances to advertise yourself here, Mercury, Jupiter. And overall, these two planets are really going to save you towards the end of the month, no doubt, from what I can see. The sun is shining brightly there in the end part of the month. And just on the 30th, we see if that wasn't enough to make you smile all the way to the bank, you've got this lovely full moon taking place in your fourth house. Fourth house has to do with your inner satisfaction. Most astrologers talk predominantly about your family affairs and your mother and blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. Yes, that'll be nice, but I always say home is where the heart is, so it's more to do with your internal mechanism how, and how happy and satisfied you can be. So that's a nice conclusion to the month, and I hope it makes you feel all warm and fuzzy till I see you next time. But subscribe, please, and also come and visit me at my site, astrology.com.au. We have uh, more detailed analysis on the month, the daily readings, yearly readings, a lot of oracles there that you can have fun, all free. Unless, of course, you want to have a private reading with me. That's very expensive. Not too expensive, but you're welcome to uh, drop me a line if you wish. You're welcome to tell me off if you want. Um, I prefer you to say nice things, but anyhow, until next month, take care and thanks for your company again. Bye-bye.